Greetings from the right coast. This is Mad Chat. So, uh, something that Pinball Preparedness uh, was talking about with his new one, and uh, that that's uh, when the S hits the fan, and uh, how to get rid of and how to deal with uh, uh, waste and uh, things of that nature. Um, and from that point, you know, you have to work about, you have to worry about storage and disposal and, I mean, we, we don't think about that. It just goes down a hole, a watery hole. We, we hit a lever and flush, it goes down. Goodbye. We don't have to worry about it. We, we take our refuse and we, we put it outside and somebody grabs it. Or we got to take it off and put it in some kind of metal bin and they take it off and, you know, it goes to a landfill or whatever. Uh... But something that I have done for about 12 years here on the beach is pest control. And that, that's, that's one of the things that, that, uh, that, <clears throat> that Pinball brought up. That's very important. That's going to be very, very important. Uh, so in my 12 years as, as a pest control operator in, in structural and commercial uh, I, I worked mostly in, in uh, restaurants, uh, I've done hotels and condos, and I've been in, I've, I've been in just about every freaking climb and place here on the right coast, and North Carolina, and Georgia, uh, usually at night running around, that, that was, uh, anyway, pest control can be a big business, <laughs> can also be very, very taxing on you, but anyway, I digress. Uh, so with these, I, I've, I used to do. I used to go to the water treatment plant and do treat. Uh, do do, uh, do do some treatments there. Uh, I'm familiar with uh, the landfill and, the, and their issues there. Uh, and any, any anywhere that you're going to have refuse uh, and <clears throat> how to deal with that, Wh whatever you plan on doing with that, that's fine. But you're always going to have that pest that is it's always going to be very very conducive for the pest environment um, now it's been almost a year or two since I've been out of that world but I, I, it's still kind of fresh in my mind um, and we, I, I come from old school where we just freaking bomb everything put on a gas mask and go in and shh, you know fog everything and kill everything and and, and you've got thousands upon thousands of roaches piling up and they're coming out of your craw collars and crawling all over you and uh, been on your crawl spaces and houses and uh, dealt with the termites and rats oh god the rats the rats the rats the rats I went most of my uh, I cut my teeth on rats in uh, Charleston South Carolina uh, that whole place is raised up that downtown area is raised up off of the old Charleston uh, so there's a, a, a subterranean crawl space under Charleston that is a rat haven. Uh, rodents are a huge problem and they, 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 they're, they're going to spread a lot of disease and filth, uh, and they're also damaging too. They will, they will eat anything. They will eat through anything. I've seen them chew through steel. Yes, they, they will. Uh, the whole place... I'm not going to dox any of the places that I've been to, but <clears throat> especially there on Meeting Street, the restaurants were built up high, uh, and the flooring was literally old railroad ties. They were creosote, huge, huge railroad ties. Most of it railroad ties and old ships is how they built uh, the flooring. Beautiful. It's great. and it, Man, it's strong as hell, and it's propped up. The rats chewed through that, through literally like six inches of wood, creosote wood, which you wouldn't think that they could, but they would. So what they do is they take their time. They See, a rat's teeth constantly grow, and so they have this need to gnaw. They have to or it's going to grow and, and, and kill them. Uh, it literally, it will grow into their throat and kill them. So they have to gnaw. They have to. So they'll... Just, just like a uh, standing in line 
And they'll sit there. Okay, I'm done. Next. Okay, I'm done. Next. So on and so forth. So you think about that a thousand times. Uh, whatever these rats will, and if they can, if they can smell that they know that food is above them, they're gonna go after it, and they know. That's how a rat is. They got a good sniffer. Uh, they literally chewed through that, chewed through the floor. This amazing strong six inch even bigger timber creosote timber old and ancient timber uh, got up through that and just went amuck in the restaurants chewing on everything eating on everything breaking in everything so <coughs> the owner puts a piece of wood on top of that oh my god they chew through that of course just go right through it they just chewed through six inches of creosote uh, He's like, wow, what the fuck? We put out route traps, we put out bait, bait stations. It's you know, they're they're going for something else. They're going for the food, the dirt, the the grime, the grease, the the leftover chicken wing that's underneath the uh, the oven, uh, that's sitting in in you know an inch thick or two inch thick of old grease that's been sitting there and dripping and dripping. So uh, he ain't worried about my bait. He's got better stuff. He's gonna go after that. So, the owner finally takes a piece of steel, stainless steel. Got it laying around everywhere in the uh, in the restaurant. It took them a while, but they chewed through that. Yeah, they just right up. Yeah. Yep, sure did. Uh, and uh. We were we were amazed and shocked about it. Uh, like, wow, they really do this, yeah. Uh, and then we got reports, you know, from other places that yeah, there's been instances where they they'll they'll chew through 55 gallon buckets, uh, you know, the big the big oil can buckets. Uh, they will they will chew through just about anything, uh, steel, any kind of thick steel. They'll they'll. They can chew through that too. It takes them a while, but they'll do it. If you've got like a thousand or so of them, yeah, they're gonna go for that. Uh, they're gonna find a way to get in. Usually, they're gonna go for something that's less uh, hard, you know, something that's easier to chew through. Uh, we 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 have found that that the best thing is steel wool, steel wool and the spray foam. Um, they don't like that so much. They like the spray foam. They go right through it. Shh. But then they get to the steel wool and ah, uh, 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 and it starts cutting their lung, uh, gums and everything in their mouth. Anyway, so that's a little backstory. Uh, um, if you have, you're, you're, when when you're dealing with all this refuse, uh, you're going to have a lot of issues. It's it's you're not going to be that clean. It's even in your even in your in your in your life, uh, as at your home, or you know, in the in this you know, mag community or whatever you know, shift community, whatever. Uh, look up IPM, Integrated Pest Management. Uh, that's the new thing now. It's 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 a more common sense approach to dealing with pest, uh, and, it, and it, it involves a lot of uh, exclusion. Uh, exclusion is uh, caulking and sealing everything in your house or everything in the structure uh, so that nothing can get in so you don't have that problem um, and, and the thing is they are always going to find a way in most of the times they're brought in uh, any kind of grains uh, store product pests that happens a lot a lot of you preppers have already started to see that you open your flour or your rice, and you get this. What, what is this thing? It's bow weevils, or or you open up a, a a package, and all these moths come flying out. Ooh, what the hell is that? You know, yeah, it's it's yeah. The 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 way that they they, they process the food, um, they're allowed seven parts per whatever uh, of 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 insect parts. In your food, it's, it's allowed. Seven parts, seven parts per whatever poundage, whatever, whatever. Uh, but yeah, 
because when they process it, the the bugs they they don't really it, it's such a huge it, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around it, uh, you know uh, it, it's such a huge undertaking to try to stop all of it. You can't. You just can't. Yeah, th there's always going to be ants. There's always going to be boll weevils. There's always going to be you know they, the the insect population outnumbers us by trillions. And they constantly multiply, and they constantly change, and they constantly evolve, and adapt, change, and overcome. Uh, it's 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 really amazing. A a we we, we had to change our uh, change up our our, our chemical uh, that we use for a, a deterrent, um, you know, like spraying the baseboards with the BNG can. We we had to change that up every six months because the uh, the the German cockroach was finding a way to become immune. That's how fast their evolution is. They can literally change. There, there's some things they, they can't, uh, and I've also gotten into the, the uh, um, that's probably what's wrong with me too, is the, 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 the after effects of using a lot of chemicals and things of that nature. It, it really does affect you, and, it, and if you're not applied pr correctly, you can really mess things up bad, uh, especially for dogs and cats and, you know, um, any kind of livestock, or you know, chickens and cows, and I mean, it's it's agriculture. There, there there's so many broad spectrums of pest control that 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 come into play into just about everything that that we we consume and that we that we live in, and, and you know, uh, so <coughs> the best way is the integrated pest management, where that's a lot of monitoring. A lot of addressing of, of, of structural integrity and, and, and exclusion, uh, practicing exclusion, uh, addressing and dealing with any kind of problem that comes up, because you're constantly monitoring. Uh, you're using like little uh, little glue boards. Um, there, there, there's so much into that. Just walking around, inspecting with a flashlight, digging through product that is packaged, looking for telltale signs of sputum and, and, and uh, fecal matter. Uh, any, any kind of gnaw marks, any kind of uh, uh, rub marks. Uh, rats like to, they're, they're almost blind. And uh, they, but they can, they can run around and pitch black dark. And what they do, rat, rats and mice, is what they, they stick next to the wall and they, they use their whiskers, these things, eh? and they run and they feel against the wall and they rub it with their body. And they secrete this, ugh, this, this nasty oil it comes off their skin and their, their their fur, and so they smell it and they go, "Oh, okay, I'm in a good place. I mean, I'm in a familiar zone. I know exactly where I'm at. They've mapped out the area. Okay, I go straight. I turn right. Boom, 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 boom. And yeah, so you know, rats are rats are very uh very clever, but they're very uh, uh they they don't like to mess around. They're very cautious. So unless they're hungry. Very very cautious. You you can you got rats and you put out bait or a trap. Chances are they're not gonna mess with it because like, it, it totally fucks up their their uh, their 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 program. They've they've mapped out and memorized the area, and now you've just put something in their way, an obstacle, and they're like, "What is that?" So they're gonna be very standoffish. It might take you some time. Uh, a lot of times, what we do is we pre-bait. We'll pre-bait a trap with some kind of food and whatever they're eating, you know, nothing, nothing, no, nothing that's going to kill them. Uh, just something good and smelly and yummy. Uh, peanut butter. Uh, we'll, we'll take peanut butter and rub it on something and they'll go for that and they'll get used to that trap being there and they used to be going in there and they'll hide out. I've, I've opened, opened bait traps and the rats in there and like, wee, wee, wee. Uh, rats are dangerous and they do spread disease. Um, and they, they also have rabies. They can bite you. Uh, it's not a good thing. Uh, I remember. <laughs> Whew. And they're fast. Oh, man, they're fast. But anyway, I, I, could, do, I could do a whole story on just rats alone. Uh, but the, the, the point of this, uh, this, this video is, 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 is getting, that, getting that knowledge. And, and if you're going to be setting up a situation, especially you're going to be dealing with wildlife. Uh, because you can use that to your advantage. Uh, if you're dealing with the wildlife and you're dealing with refuse and compost and, uh, you know, your, 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 their waste, yeah, your, your ex excrement, if you will, that has to be addressed and addressed properly because you will 
you will definitely mess yourself up living in a in a a environment of that nature where you cannot get rid of that get rid of that waste uh you know the urine and the fecal matter um and and you don't want to be the one putting your putting your hands you know whatever you touch is covered in fecal matter um so you, we we've learned that you know what we have is is pretty much the, a, a pretty good solution uh to dealing with that with the septic tank and the in the toilets uh and then and then of course that gets that that brackish that that water gets taken out and treated and they actually do treat it and reconstitute it and put it back through your your pipe so you can drink it but they take out all that stuff and there is a process of doing that uh, a lot of agitation and <laughs> Uh, a lot of chemicals and more agitation, more filtering, and it is a huge undertaking, especially when you're dealing with thousands upon thousands of, hundreds of thousands of gallons of waste coming into pipes into these waste, waste tre uh, treatment facilities. And yes, I've seen the, the, the shit rapids. Oh God, they agitate the hell out of this thing. It just, you don't want to fall in there, let me tell you. Uh, so dealing with that stuff, you, you really have to address that. Uh, you don't want it getting into the water supply. Uh, I seen that in Africa. People were just literally going into the water, just bloop, and just dropping it right there. And downstream, somebody is getting some water to take it back home to cook with, or they're taking baths. And so you, you look at uh, India. India has these laws because they still bathe. There, there's there's actual bathing areas. That that's what it's for. Is you go to this designated area and you bathe, okay? It is. It's big. You walk down the big steps and you take off your clothes and uh, you know and you wash your clothes and boom, you're chilling. It's, it's you know it's an event. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then there's another area where you poop and you poop, and it's usually a marshy kind of nasty area anyway. And uh, there there's kind of a raised. Uh, a raised outhouse, and they go up there, and blop, blop, and it goes off into the marshy, swampy, Ganges kind of area where it gets naturally uh, uh, filtered and, and and whatever. So uh, you can use nature to your advantage. Don't be pooping in the creek. Don't be pissing in the creek because you're going to need that. And and um. There's also leaching. Leaching is also an issue as well. That is where you have groundwater or ground. Whatever you put here goes down here and just leaches through the through the ground levels, getting to the water supply, getting to the artesian wells, getting getting to that that you know water table and being produced and and thrown moved around throughout and so you you won't know so if you think you're just gonna dig a big fucking hole and, and poop in it uh you, you might want to rethink that unless you have some idea of what your geological uh, <laughs> uh area is like um I, I would advise against that um dealing with that stuff um really really is a is an issue you can get away with it for a little bit, you know, and dig a cat hole or dig a latrine. Uh, but any kind of long-term uh, community, you're going to really have to think about getting rid of that waste and doing something with it. Uh, foodstuffs, foodstuffs and things of that nature, you can you can compost that. You can use that as bait and, and other things. Uh, so uh, any kind of trash, you can recycle. Uh, burning. Once again, that burning and that, that trash and that recycle and that storage of that trash, recycle, and, and, and compost, it all has to be cleaned. It all has to be processed. And you got to make sure that nothing gets to it because everything is going to come to you. All the snakes, all the rats, all the roaches, all everything, birds and buzzards. And, and I, I went to a place, it was a Mexican restaurant, and they had a buzzard infestation. That's right. A buzzard infestation. Buzzards and vultures would descend upon their their place at first light. And they would, because they were just taking stuff and just throwing it. 
uh, not only a Mexican place, but we, we also have a lot of seafood places. And uh, so they have a lot of seafood, you know, refuse and stuff. So it was very simple, uh, very simple indeed how to get rid of their buzzards. And that was to close the lid on the dumpster. Make sure it's closed. How simple is that? Raccoons. Raccoons. Raccoons are amazing. They're also destructive and their, their um, excrement can be lethal. Um, we've had to do some of those uh, removals in, in people's attics. They would literally crawl through, especially in the wintertime, uh, in, the, in the cold. Uh, during the day, during during the summer, they're they're roving around in packs and they're knocking over trash cans and and, and you know stealing cat food on the on the porch and you know in the, in the winter time they're cold and they're looking for a place and they smell all this good smelly good food cooking and they'll they'll literally chew a hole through the top of your house into your roof and live in your attic and in this one case they it was a family up there in the attic they had been up there for quite some time. People thought they were just squirrels running around or something. And they're like, yeah, it must be squirrels. But no, they were raccoons, whole family of them. And they were coming and going and eating the trash and coming. They were braving the cold, coming back up, and braving the cold, getting something to eat and food and water. And then coming, and they can get food, they can get water from the food. So they were literally going down, grabbing the food, coming back into the, uh, to the attic and hanging out. So they were pooping and pissing all up in the attic. And what happened was, is that stuff started dr just filling up the house with this odorous, malfeasant, amazing, destructive stuff. Uh, and these people started getting sick. They got really, really sick. And they had to go to the hospital. The doctors didn't know what it was and all this and that. And yeah, it, it came from the raccoon fecal matter and the urine. And they, they, they're, they're pretty much, they, they're like cats. They like to pick a spot and they go there, and they go there constantly, and they're they're just gonna just, you know, at one corner, and so you got a whole family, and they're pooping once a day, you know, yeah, they're gonna be doing that a lot, and you're gonna have a massive, huge problem, and it's a biological problem, absolutely bio biological. Uh, so there, there's a lot to think about if you're gonna be doing long term uh, things. Um, remember camping, uh, and and of course in the Marine Corps. Never eat where you sleep and never shit where you eat. I mean, that's very simple. Uh, so, um, and don't leave a trail. Because <laughs> we can follow that. Uh, so, there's some things to think about. Uh, look into that, you know, integrated pest management, uh, waste removal. Uh, a lot of countries have some very, very innovative ideas and in, in ways and means to get rid of that stuff. So, uh, and it, it's very cost effective for them. Um, so yeah, uh, something we might have to think about, definitely have to think about if you're going to be, uh, living in some type of long-term community, um, pest control there, there is now, okay, mind you, there is a lot of holistic stuff out there. Um, I, I, I could, I could do another video on just what works and what doesn't, um, <laughs> Like I said before, everything get uh, the German, you know, Blatella Germanica, the German cockroach, the most infest, you know, in you know, insidious uh, infestation roach, cockroach that we usually see, the German uh, that goes that lives with us, has been living with us since uh, you know, the dawn of man, uh, and that name is misleading. Uh, that tells you that they thought it came from Germany. Actually, it should be called. Ethiopia blatella because it came from Ethiopia. But anyway, I digress. That's billions of years into uh, into the, uh, the, the the whole etymology history and all that. Uh, so what was I saying? Yeah, um, things that work, things that don't work. Even the stuff that we have, you know, from the big major uh, chemical companies and corp corporations, they have to change constantly because the bugs, not only the German cockroaches. Everything else is adapting and evolving as well. Um, so, <laughs> uh, and you don't want to poison yourself trying to kill, poison yourself and others trying to kill that one pest. Usually it's a very simple solution. You change their food, you take away their food, you take away the water supply, 
you chain you, you you take away their their shelter their their temperature their environment you change any of those and it makes it very difficult for them to survive and they're going to probably go somewhere else uh, here we have the palmetto bug what is called the palmetto bug it's also it's actually called american uh it's the american cockroach is its name it's huge huge they call it the palmetto bug because it likes the rotting vegetation of the palmetto tree and uh they will come inside and and you know, they look they look big and scary they're actually kind of edible uh you have to be careful of the salmonella that they carry as well uh <laughs> don't yeah uh but yes they will sneak in through through your house through the cracks and crevices in your plumbing voids in your door underneath your doors in your windows if you can take a credit card and slide it in there your seals are not good enough um, so that's that's what we say is caulk and seal your house from your doors to your windows to your plumbing voids inside and outside address all those issues and uh, you will usually have no problems because um, most of the most of the pests that are that come inside are brought in or they just walk in uh, the American cockroach being the the same thing they can literally flatten themselves out to the size to the to the to the you know they they walk around like this and they can literally go and flatten themselves out like a credit card and slide right in uh, but once they come inside the biggest thing that kills them is air conditioning they require a lot of heat they require a lot of yeah heat they, they require a lot of humidity and moisture. That's why they're all over the place in the summertime. It's, it's, it's hot and it's wet, a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity in the air. Uh, and, and when it gets cold, they, they, they go down and into your structures. They come into your structures. But the air conditioning dries them out and they die, uh, usually within that day. So you know, usually people come in, ah, yeek! You know, you get that, you know, oh my God, we got roaches. And yeah, it's just a palmetto bug or an American cockroach. Been done a thousand, thousands upon thousands of callbacks for that one. Okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and spray. Well, you don't really have to spray. They're, they're going to die. They're going to. They're already. They're for for them coming inside is walking into the Sahara Desert for them, uh, unless you have a lot of humidity and moisture in your house. Yeah. So, uh, well, I mean, we're getting we're getting really really deep and into this. So yeah, uh, some things to think about, especially if you're going to be doing long term. Um, Short term, you really don't have to worry about it, but you can use that to your advantage. Crops and agriculture, that's man, the, the pests that are involved with that. I mean, I've I've seen I've seen rats so fat that they couldn't move. They were literally sitting in a corn corn bin just eating, not moving. And they can't move now. Cause <laughs> uh, roaches that, that that were literally like this big. From eating all the steroid-induced uh, feed, uh, just crazy, crazy stuff. And then that brings the snakes, and then you know, uh, so so it's 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 a it's a it's a a a, a definitely a chain, a uh, a f a feeding frenzy chain, a pyramid, if you will. You know, you've got your 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 scavengers, and the scavengers bring predators, and predators bring, uh, you know, all that. So. Uh, some things to think about. Things to think about. If you're going to be growing crops, we all know. Any of you gardeners out there know about them bunny rabbits and them moles. And, and uh, you know, uh, there's so many pesky little critters that, that you know, that, that like to nibble on things. Uh, the Japanese beetles. And, and, and they all come in cycles. So getting to know, getting to know what, what they need, what they are, what they have, uh what works and what doesn't, what, what they're susceptible to, um, definitely, please. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever uh, about, about any of that, please you know, hit me up. You can email me. You can just hit me up on the comments, and I will, I will share my knowledge uh, freely. They charge thousands of dollars for this. I'm going to do it freely because they piss me off. Yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> and we should know this stuff anyway. It, it, it should be common knowledge, and it is. Most of it, it is. Um, you know, as far as chemical-wise and things of that nature, uh, some of the holistic stuff, uh, we'll, we'll, we can get into that at a later date. But, yeah, this is, uh, I'm going to end it here. This is Mad Shad, and I am signing off.